Hey guys, my name is Aaron Massey and welcome back to another episode of Homeschooled. Today's project is how to install a new window in new construction. This episode of Homeschooled is brought to you by DAP, the leading manufacturer of caulks, adhesives, and patch and repair products for all your DIY needs. For a complete list of products, visit their website at dap.com. Over the last couple weeks, I've been helping a friend of mine enclose what once was a screened-in patio. Now we've enclosed it and made it a little bit more of a enclosed patio. It's got French doors, some big windows, lets lots of light in, but it's gonna be climate controlled. So I wanted to show you guys how we install a new window in new construction like this, in case you're ever doing an addition or something like that and you want to uh, install a new window. I rate these projects by how many F-bombs you're likely to drop while tackling the project. This one is slightly on the difficult side because it requires a little extra knowledge and an extra set of hands to help tackle it. So this wall right here is gonna have a four foot window, kind of concealed by this house wrap right now, but uh, kind of outlined right here. You can see these silver Sharpie lines. That is the outside of where the window is gonna fall. And this we're gonna cut out. So to get started, I'm first ripping a slit down the middle of the window. Then I cut along the top and the bottom. And then along the sides, I actually cut the paper back a couple inches wider than the rough opening. And I'll show you why I do this in a minute. At the corners, I cut away from the opening on a 45 degree angle, about six inches. And that leaves me these little flaps, which is important for the next couple steps. So what we've got here is a rough, what's called a rough opening. And the rough opening is slightly bigger than the window that you're installing. So you've got to know what the rough in is expected to be on your window that you're going to install so that you can make sure if you're doing the framing that the rough opening is the right size. In our case, our rough opening is about a half an inch wider and taller than what the window is going to be that's going to be inside of it. Basically, you've got flaps kind of on all four sides. You cut the diagonals as I just showed you. And then you've got these little flaps on the side and a little flap on the bottom. Now, other people sometimes fold the tar paper inside the window. I choose not to do that because I find that if the water gets behind that, it has an immediate way into the house, no matter what you do on top of it. Uh, I prefer to go to the next step, doing it the way that I'm about to show you because I think it provides a little bit of a better water seal. Some other people might do it a different way. So our next step is gonna to be to install some waterproof flashing membrane to create a bit of a sill pan at the bottom of our window to make sure that it's watertight. Now this product is one of many products that's out there, but basically what it is is a peel and stick waterproof membrane. So what I'm doing is mocking up the piece and making sure that I have four or five inches on each side of the window. So it'll be about 10 inches longer than the window frame is wide. And then I cut that off to length. Next, I'm cutting back the house wrap a couple inches on the bottom of the window because I didn't do it earlier. And I'm extending the cuts in the corners a little bit to make it easier for me to get the flashing inside. Then I peel and stick the flashing, making sure that it has a nice tight seal to the substrate or the sheeting and the paper below it. In the corners, you wanna make sure this first layer gets tucked under the side flaps and secured to the sheathing. Next, I'm cutting another piece of flashing at the same length and I overlap it a few inches on top of the first piece, making sure that it too is secured under the side flaps. Then I carefully cut down into the corners and fold the remaining flashing inside the sill. In this case, we're working with a two by six wall, so it doesn't cover the whole sill. In a typical two x four framing, this will typically cover the whole sill. Now I could add another piece of flashing to cover the whole sill, but I don't really think it's necessary in this case. In the corners, I cut a small piece of flashing and mount it to the side of the frame and the sill and carefully cut a slit to secure it down. Make sure you take your time here and make sure you don't have any holes or exposed areas where water could trickle in behind your flashing. Now, if your sills were framed correctly, they should be slightly out of level towards the outside of the house. This is important because if water ever did get under your window, it would flow out towards the outside of the house rather than towards the interior and ruin the drywall or create a mold issue inside your wall. So the idea with the flaps is a little bit simple. You want everything to step down from water barrier to water barrier, basically, is what you're trying to do. So this water sheds out onto this flap and then this flap out onto this flap. So you start at the bottom and you work your way up waterproofing each additional layer as you go so that way it steps down and the water doesn't have the ability to go back up inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to dry fit the window in place, make sure that everything's cool, make sure that our spacing lines up. And I'm adding some quarter inch shims under the window to create an air gap and allow for a place for us to insulate around the window later. You never want to set your window directly on the sill itself. What I'm checking for on the inside is that our spacing around the window is fairly consistent and the window is centered in the opening. Dry fitting will also show you any issues regarding the size of your rough opening. In our case, 
everything looks good so we can move on to the next step. It's important to note that in this instance, we're using a window with a nailing flange. Everything is gonna be secured on the outside here. Not always the case in every window that you're gonna use, but each window is a little bit different. You gotta know what manufacturer you're gonna go with. This one's a nailing flange window. Next, we're gonna add a bead of sealant around the nailing flange of our window. I'm using DAP's Dynaflex 800 for this, which is a premium polymer sealant. What I like about it for this application is that it's super durable and doesn't shrink or crack when it cures, and it retains a ton of elasticity, creating a really nice tight water seal around the flange of the window. So I apply a generous bead around the nailing flange right along the nail holes. Some people choose to apply the sealant to the wall instead, but I find it's a bit cleaner to do it this way. At the bottom, I'm leaving a few small gaps gaps in the sealant so that there are a few weep holes in case water does somehow make its way in. The slope of the sill will send it towards those weep holes and out to the exterior rather than inside. Finally, we're ready to hoist our window in place. I'm tacking one corner with a roofing nail to hold it in place and then check the interior spacing once again before checking it for plumb and level outside. Then I secure the window in its final place with roofing nails all along the nail flange. Next, I'm taking another piece of rolled flashing and securing this piece over top the window flange to the OSB sheathing and to the house wrap, making sure to tuck it up underneath the top flap and over top the bottom piece of flashing. I do this on both sides. Once the sides are complete, I can attach the top piece of flashing. With this piece, I install it underneath our top flap and directly to the sheathing and over our nailing flange. So any water that gets onto the house wrap above the window should shed off down the sides. Lastly, I use some house wrap tape to tape our diagonal cuts that aren't covered by the flashing, and I tape the top flap above the window as well. Sometimes I also tape the edges of the flashing down just to make sure that it holds nice and tight. And that is it, we are done with this project. Now many homeowners may feel intimidated by installing their own windows, but I wanted to show you that it is possible with a little bit of knowledge to do it yourself if you choose to. Once you understand the basics of installing a new window and new construction, it really applies to just about any size or shape window that you're installing. Now the process is a little bit different if you're doing a replacement window, and I'll likely be tackling that project in the near future, so I'll be sure to make a video about that. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Homeschool. If you liked it or if you learned something, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below and let me know. Also feel free to reach out to me via social media. The links to those are down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.